Welcome to the Media CFO Podcast, the show where we talk to people on the front lines of finance, business affairs, legal and strategy in the media and entertainment industry. I'm your host, Tobias Jäger, and when I'm not hosting this podcast, I'm the CFO of television and content studio Colibri Studios in London. Today, we're joined by Garrick van Slingeland, who is a partner in Amsterdam-based Volterra Group. Garrick started his career as talent agent, and over the years, together with his business partners Daniel Kufut and Anne Paul Howen, built a group of media companies ranging from talent agency Monte Catini, film packaging firm European Film Company, production company Pellicola, film finance company Global Film Partners, as well as a musical financing and production company. So welcome to the program, Garrick. Fantastic to have you here. Thank you very much. Um, in the intro, we heard a lot of Italian names from the company. Yeah. So one might actually assume you're Italian and not Dutch. <laughs> ah, it's not me, but it's my partner, Daniel, who has an Italian background. And okay. he started the first company, which was a talent agency okay. in Montecatini, uh, a place where uh, his family owns a house. Oh, I see. So that's where the first Italian name of the company came from. And then we started working it out oh. on different companies. So. You were like... Let's continue the tradition. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Let's yeah. give them all Italian names. So. It's good. It, sound, yeah. uh, it sounds a bit mafia-like. <laughs> it definitely sounds very suave. So yeah. I think you guys did a uh, good job. So you were mentioning you started with the talent agency. Um, what kind of, what came next? How did you, how did this become a group, basically? Yeah, so, so 20 years ago, um, uh, two partners of, of mine started Montecatini Talent Agency. It was an agency that represents actors, presenters, uh, uh, singers, uh, uh, directors, etc. And we also had a um, marketing company that helped out a little bit theatrical productions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then while we were representing the guys uh, in the, in the uh, creative industry, there were a lot of ideas coming our way, not only from <laughs> the guys imagine, that, yeah. <laughs> that, that we represented, but also we were in the business and, and we said to ourselves, listen, we need to broaden the spectrum a little bit and, get into production as well so that we not only can help our own talent that we represent mm. to new work but it was a, a creative challenge for us as well i see okay so it was really uh, the demand driven in the sense that you know you had all this work and you're like why are we giving this away Ex we exactly. might as well do it ourselves yeah not not from a point of view that we thought that Uh, we could do it better than the guys in the field already. Yeah. But just from a point of view, listen, this is a challenge. Mm -hmm. It is fun. Yeah. It is creative, and yeah. and and that's that's let's say f the last 20 years. That's what we do. We create stuff. We build from scratch something interesting. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I, I want to talk a bit about your personal journey because. If if I got this right, you studied law. You got a law degree. Yeah. Uh, now I think you mentioned creative six times now in the mm -hmm. last <laughs> minute. How how like usually you you uh, you know the idea of a lawyer is is the opposite. How 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 did you get from doing something like this to being now uh, involved with something very creative? Do you feel your legal training is helping you there? Uh, tell us more about your journey. Well, the 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 thing is. Obviously, the, 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 the legal training and, and, and uh, the university is a good background to have. I was always looking for, let's say, uh, things in the theater field. But as you know, the creative industry is not the biggest and easiest industry to be in yeah, so I, sure. <laughs> I, I so so uh, i decided to study law get my degree and then see what i could do next and in the oh, meantime okay. i personally uh, still wanted to become an actor oh, okay which is yeah. really weird but 
sometimes <laughs> you you, well, why not? you get mean, an insight. Yeah. And I got admitted to uh, one of the best theater schools uh, okay. in Holland, in Maastricht. Yeah. Where I the, think you studied as well. Exactly, yeah. The Toneel Academy. Uh, the Toneel Academy yeah, in Maastricht, yeah. which was really fun, but I was a little bit too old. Yeah. And I think I lacked the real talent to become a real actor. Okay. But I had, yeah, a, I I had a fantastic year at the, the theater academy and yeah. then and then i was uh bumped from the school <laughs> you're like okay yeah. good, back, uh, glad uh, i got that yeah law and I, I i went back to the to the business behind the, the the screens yeah and and then what was your next step from that i mean you had all this training you had this insights how did you um and and you you just said this it's so it's also hard to break into this industry i think yeah. It's not just um, challenging to be in it. Mm -hmm. What was the next step for you? How did you then pursue this? Because obviously you were hooked yeah. and you wanted to be part of it. I was, I was. And 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 the thing is, it it felt quite natural to help out, let's say, uh, talents in the industry. And I was lucky enough to start off my business with a woman who had a great uh, uh, talent agency, but also a production company who did theater shows and and I could help her out doing yeah. these big theater shows. So when I uh, switched companies to Montecatini Talent Agency, I knew that from that moment on, it was I was more a business developer yeah. than a talent agent. Mm -hmm. I still had quite a lot of uh, uh, actors and actresses that I represented, but I wanted to have a free... Um, a free role within the company yeah. and create stuff. Okay. So so I became, let's say, the business developer of Montecatini Talent Agency. And let's say after we uh, started a very successful theater play, uh, I decided not to focus on talent agency anymore, but just to focus on uh, creating theater plays, okay. international films, Financing that kind of stuff. Yeah, interesting. Um, so, I think one of the the question that comes to mind, especially when you talk about these different activities, is how do you split your time between them? How do you prioritize what you need to focus on, and how do you not run the risk of like just putting out fires all the time? Yeah. Um, but actually, kind of <laughs> focus on doing something proactive because that's the only way to grow it. Mm -hmm. uh, How did you do this in the beginning? Um, when when you joined the you know the first talent agencies, but there was also production. Um, how did you manage to you know not have your clients call say like you're not making time for me? You were just doing production. Yeah, but that, that's that's uh, there was at a time where I didn't have a private life. Let's say I didn't have a <laughs> wife and kids like I have now. <laughs> so I had all the time in the world. Yeah. So I worked 24 seven. I see. It was, it was, it, like it, all talent agencies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was literally 24 seven. The phone was on yeah. the, uh, uh, I was in the theater. I yeah. was watching movies. I was doing negotiations with television studios. Uh, but I had a boss at that time who, managed me and managed me back okay said listen you have to go and do exercise before you come to work so yeah. you have to go to the to the gym yeah. before you come to work because you have to stay healthy i don't yeah. want to lose you uh, interesting so that was that, yeah. that was really good and then afterwards when i joined Montecatini talent agency that was the moment where i took matters in my own hand yeah. and the fun thing is that we are doing all of these things with uh, three partners now. Yeah. And we divide and split okay. the workload. Yeah. So I have one partner who is uh, very much into the film industry mm -hmm. and I do uh, all of the film meetings, film markets, etc. with him. Yeah. I have another guy who is more like the new business online, etc. So we do the creative content online i do it with him okay so we we help each other and and we have each other's backs that's i see i see so divide and conquer yeah that's it so f from the first job it, it sounded like your 
your boss was also a lot of like a mentor for you. She was, um, yeah. which must have been incredibly helpful to have someone mm. senior saying, like, oh, "Don't, don't do this." I mean, first of all, great that <laughs> she's had to go to the gym <laughs> rather than spend an hour more in the office. Um, exactly, really looking out for you by the sounds of it. Um, how? Like, how did you take that experience? Because uh, obviously now you're running this. Um, and this is something I ask myself every once in a while. Like, how how do you maintain this mentorship mm. that you get someone that's at least sounding board or someone that has done it? Um, so you don't have to, like, come up with everything on the spot yourself. Yeah. Well, that, that's 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 what I just said is the the partners that we have in the company are... Uh, mm. uh, are a real help. Yeah. They, we 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 help each other. When we have a question, we go back to the partner and say, "Listen, is this okay?" Yeah, it's not every every meal that I write, every negotiation that I do, <laughs> etc. That I that I check it. Yeah. but but it it's sometimes it's very nice to have yeah. someone near to check yeah. your facts. Yeah, to to check if you are. Uh, doing okay. Yep. And the most important thing is, uh, I think besides, let's say, having a great mentor in the early stages of your career, is to keep on listening mm. to the people that you work with and that you encounter in the industry. They know it better than you. Yep. They have been there yep. before. They have done it before. Keep your ears and eyes open and then if you are a little bit smart <laughs> things things yeah. will fall into place yeah, that's yeah. but 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 keep an open mind keep keep your eyes open that's yeah. that's the most important thing that's very interesting because i feel like a lot of people in this industry have unlearned that yeah <laughs> and uh, so when when you work with the partners i mean now you guys have like what five companies in the group yeah um, it feels like there's probably more <laughs> to come how did you go in the past but also going forward how do you approach this when you go is this just an activity that one of the companies pursues or is this another company altogether um basically in like managing the growth because you said everything so far has been very organic mm. you didn't go and buy three four other companies and say okay we're a big group now um it was all organic how did you approach that how did yeah. you make that decision obviously we we have those uh let's say those conversations and 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 we go into processes sometimes of going into a partnership or trying to acquire another company if it's a talent agency or a film company so so there are definitely talks of growing but it's in i think in the creative industry it's very it's very difficult to merge or buy someone mm. and tell them and now this is how we are going to do it yeah it's too personal the business mm. uh, so that's that's why we uh, that's why we grow our company in a slow way in a way that we can manage it mm -hmm. in a way that we feel that we still can control it yeah uh, and 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 that is that is very important because you you said well okay we, you have five companies and how do you manage your time between yeah yeah uh, uh the companies it, it is very difficult to do it certainly when you uh let's say keep the uh the overhead uh, uh lean and mean yeah <laughs> because it, it, it we we only attract people when we have a production into production yeah we don't let's say go much further than let's say the the, the 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 five companies that we have it's it's more than enough yeah. we, we have let's say three four five yeah. things in development yeah. per company yeah. and that's manageable if you go further then you need to have people on board yeah. that that help you out and we learned that for us it's not an ideal situation to have more people on board yeah. because you have to manage the people and then you can't focus on 
what you really want to do is create something. Yeah, for You're sure. You're a people manager. Yeah. yeah, I mean, especially on on the film side, it's very cyclical. You know, you have something in production and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're working with, you know, 50, 60 people. Yeah. And then at some point the production is done and, and it, you know, slows down again. And I'm I'm always amazed with, especially on the production company side, that people then end up with like 50 people mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, not just the payroll, but it's also, of course, in from, from managing your own time and the people uh, point of view. It's quite demanding. It is, and then you yeah. at some point stop running the company. <laughs> yeah. the, the, I, I, I have the utmost respect for the guys who can do that and can manage that. Yeah. But it's not my. Business. You didn't sign up no. for it. No. <laughs> no. No. But that's so basically. If, um, if I if I got this right, you um, when you got to the point where you thought, okay, should we start another company? Mm -hmm. There was. It was. It almost sounds like the pain was so intense that you had no other choice than to start the new company and make it its own entity, vehicle, organization. Yeah, and 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 mostly with good partners. Yeah. So so each company that we have started out by finding the right partner to go with it, either from our own company or someone from the outside that had an additional expertise that we lacked. Oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. So, so uh, let's say uh, from uh, a financing point of view, we have a, a, product, a, 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 a film financing company called Global Film Partners. Yeah. So we attracted someone from the outside who has a huge network and, and uh, let's say expertise in the finance business, uh, which... I don't have, I studied law. I know how to do contracts. I know how to negotiate. I know how to sell things. Yeah. But my financial background is not that great. So I, I need to attract a partner if I want to start a company like that. Yeah. I need to attract a partner who has those Makes sense. capabilities. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so basically... Uh, part of the growth was also from the team and who was who who you started working with and yeah. um, it seems like you and you just mentioned this uh, a lot of the activities are around uh, centered around film mm -hmm. um, but you also do other things and um, you just mentioned the one company talk to us a little bit more more about how the group is set up in in the activities you guys pursue yeah we we have a holding company uh, called Volterra and and we have uh, two film production companies uh, underneath the holding company. Uh, one is more genre and uh, Dutch based, okay. and the other one is more international based. Uh, then we have a film financing company. Uh, we have a theater production company, um, and we have a special projects company, and we have the talent agency. That is, so again, you don't sleep anymore. No, <laughs> no, no it, it's it's true that sometimes it gives you a, a, a bit of a headache uh, uh, to to run all those things. But yeah. luckily enough, I'm not alone. Yeah. It's not me doing all those companies. There yeah. are uh, good people, good partners who help me out. And uh, let's say the the theater company is uh, started out. 15 years ago when we went into, let's say from marketing more into production. Uh, and we, uh, one of our partners created a very successful show called Soldier of Orange based on the movie. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And it's now I running mean, for huge. eight years, yeah. uh, still sold out every, wow. every night, 1100 people every night go see that show. Wow, it's, fantastic. it's amazing. So yeah. that's, that's a big backbone to the theater company. Slowly but surely, you meet new people through uh, that big show yeah. and start to create new ideas. And if you want to have, let's say, a success like that, mm -hmm. it's not from one day to another that you say, okay, we're going to create a <laughs> new show that yeah. will run for eight years. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it will take you five, six, seven years in developing the right content so that you can have a big success like that. 
Yeah. And it's no guarantee that you will have success. But for sure. But it's 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 building and, and that's what I like within all the companies that we have. It's kind of playing Lego. <laughs> it's putting the pieces together and yeah. in the end you have a result yeah. or you have a annoying brother who kills it all and <laughs> <laughs> crashes the Lego. Tells you then, oh, well, you can rebuild it. You know, that's yeah. what it's for. Um, exactly. Uh, no, but um, it's, it's quite a, f a fun analogy because obviously with Lego, you do have the opportunity to, you know, rebuild it and you go like, no, you know what? I actually think it should be done this way. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes to your point where you said, look, we're trying to keep it manageable in the sense that you know, you're not, uh, like, I mean, the bigger the ship is, the mm. more difficult it is to, you know, it's like, all right, let's turn this around 90 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't even, you know, I mean, it's a good turn, but uh, with a big ship, it takes like, what, an hour <laughs> for a ship to, to do that. So, of course, if you're nimble, um, mm. you can do that. Uh, and I think it's also quite interesting, you mentioned that a lot of the activities are, driven by the success mm. the, and and of course the team as well that there's activities by the sounds of it you, you wouldn't have touched you wouldn't have done if you didn't have the partners yeah and then the success you know so um, and and the and the fact that um we take we we don't have the urgency because our our base is quite stable we have a steady income etc we don't have the drive and urgency just to produce to produce mm. so obviously you have to pay the people you work with you have to pay your own bills but but it's not we don't we don't have the immediate drive to just make money yeah. which creates an an environment at our companies that is uh, really uh, a good uh, basic environment to be creative, to make mistakes, yep. to uh, learn from your mistakes, to do it again, yep. to kill a project okay. when when you have the feeling it's not working yep. and start over again with something else. And the, 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 we're in Berlin right now in the uh, in the Berlinale with the, the 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 film market, where you see so incredibly too much content yeah. <laughs> in the market, yeah. it's yeah. it's it's painful to see mm. that there is so much uh, been made yeah. that will never ever ever see the light. Yeah. And what's the use? of let's say let's say kind of spitting out all those productions mm. our philosophy is develop it right no. develop it in a good way no. take your time and then it will come yeah so i think I, I think you're right a lot of times obviously um you know there seems to be this great sense of urgency that ah oh, we gotta get this out right now and of course there's something to it in a sense that you know eventually you need to ship it and there's a window of time where your project might resonate mm -hmm. uh where it's timely um but yeah especially at at a film market um or a television market as well when you, when you look at the slates yeah um you sometimes think ah oh, this this there's a nice idea I wish they had taken more time to develop it out, but obviously that costs a lot of money to, you know, spend development yeah. time on it. Um, so how do you approach this, especially, you know, in terms of development and new projects, how do you decide what makes it into the group or um, is are the companies independent of each other that it isn't really your priority of, for example, the production company is working with the financing company mm. that gets the talent from the talent agency. Um, how much overlap is there actually? Basically, there is obviously a connection mm -hmm. because we, with the partners, run all the companies. But it's it's not a must that we use the talent 
in a production from the talent company in a production that we created. Totally not. Mm, okay. Totally not. And and our talent agency is Holland based, so it's Dutch actors and yeah. Restricted we try. A bit, yeah, right? we try to create international projects yeah. that 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 travel all over the world. So 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 it doesn't doesn't have to be that one company helps the other one. It mm. sure helps that let's say the financing company is able to pay for the development of yeah. projects of the film production company. And you don't need to introduce yourself every single time. <laughs> <laughs> no, true, no. true that. And true that. They kind of know where you live. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, that's that's the, yeah. That's that that's the 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 handy side of having more companies mm -hmm. uh, uh, with different expertise. Uh, but also in development with each and every project we think that you need to find outside partners who have an expertise that you lack. Yeah, okay. For, for, for instance, we are working on um, uh, an animation project. Mm -hmm. We have not done that before. Okay. So that's, that's a first off and, and, and it's very difficult to do animation. Yeah, very pricey too. Very pricey. <laughs> And and a, a very long development mm -hmm. run, yeah. but you have to find the right partners who have done it before, yeah. Because uh, the, the, otherwise, you will you will get lost. Yeah, yeah. So how did you approach that? Uh, if you take the animation film mm -hmm. as an example, how did you go about finding the partners? Because obviously nowadays one of the standards is to you know find a co-producer, yeah. use the advantages of different markets. How did you vet? Uh, the partners um, and and how did you kind of how do you manage and monitor the process because obviously you said mm -hmm. you, you haven't done it yet so uh, I think there's this quote from uh, I think it was Donald Rumsfeld he said I'm, I'm worried about the things I don't know that I don't know so <laughs> how do you how do you manage that to to stay on top of that yeah that that's that's it's it's a uh, uh, let's say a, a very lengthy process mm -hmm. And and that's why let's say my 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 partner Daniel and I we we travel a lot we go a lot to the markets uh, where we have discussions with people from the industry and and on an animation based side we go to the animation markets and we listen to guys who have done it before uh, and if you take your time, you will find the right partners to attach to your project. The thing is, you have to be willing to share and, and not to keep everything yeah. close because otherwise you, you, you won't succeed. No. no. Like I said, we have never done animation before. We have two directors, two brothers who will direct this project. Oh, wow. They have never done animation before. Oh, wow. So they okay. need all the help yeah. from the outside. Yeah. So we have a great uh, uh, head of animation here from Germany. Mm -hmm. We have a, 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 a partner uh, from the Nordic countries. Mm -hmm. We have a Belgian partner. Mm -hmm. we, we are looking for an English partner. You have to share. Yeah. Because otherwise you, you, you won't get it made because it's what you say is very expensive. Yeah. Uh, but we need the expertise. Mm. We need to have people who have done it before. Yeah, it's uh, quite interesting because um, w what you just said on the sharing, um, I've I've spent a lot of time in um, you know the startup world and mm -hmm. investment banking, and obviously also on, on the film side. And I'm always surprised how people are so afraid to share ideas. And of course, there's some reason for concern, and mm -hmm. you got to be smart about it, but. If you look at, I think if you look at the people who are the most successful in either of these industries, it's that they are willing to talk about what they're doing yeah. and, and are not afraid of, um, you know, having their ideas stolen, which of course happens every once it in does. a while. But yeah. um, this is one investor, uh, he, he coined this phrase saying like, look, like having an idea is like waking up, mm. but then actually making it happen is like getting up. 
uh, and and then actually doing it, you know, and <laughs> following your <laughs> morning routine and your yeah. commute and doing all of that. So you know, ha just having an idea is, is nice, but um, of course you need to uh, make it happen. Uh, what and and that's the other component, I think, to my question statement. <laughs> um, you said you you know you got to take the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I I find it very interesting because obviously a lot of younger producers or younger companies uh, they feel exactly that's not what they have you know they need uh, they're looking for a quick win mm. you know because obviously there's pressure on um how would you or how did you manage that in the beginning of your career or the companies when of course there was um some you know pressure to perform yeah. how, how did you balance that out by saying like okay no let's take the time to do this right but also you know Let's <laughs> achieve no, I, something. Uh, actually, the the thing is, if you don't have, let's say, the 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 priority drive of making a quick buck, and you have a base that is solid, but you don't have a, a, a financial injection, mm. then you will need to take the time. You will have to. Uh, uh, create something in a very slow and organic way because you don't have the time to rush. Yeah. Which so 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 it's it's pretty much a necessity to take it slowly, which in the end helps a lot. So so uh, if either you are doing a, a, a development of uh, of a feature film. Mm -hmm. Or uh, no, let's say we 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 uh, we created together with a, a photographer a great photography project. Okay. But the guy who had the idea of the photography project had a crazy idea that he needed to travel to all the countries in the world. <laughs> that takes time. Yeah. You can't rush that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not like, okay, well, uh, how many countries do you have? Yeah. 100 and, uh, and, uh, and 90 something. Yeah. You can't do that in a year. Yeah. So he took seven years Jesus. Oh. of traveling yeah, yeah. to make his project. I can't, you can't really do a Japanese European holiday where you do 20 countries in 10 days. Exactly, <laughs> <Just> exactly. <laughs> rush from one place yeah. to the other. No, that's uh, that and 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 people in the beginning said to him, "Wow, you have the most amazing job in the world. Mm. You are on the longest vacation ever." Yeah. And he said, "Well, I do have to work." <laughs> you are totally wrong because <laughs> it is work. It is a hardship. Yeah. It is for 5 days in a city actually trying to get that perfect shot and yeah. then get yeah. out of the country and go to the next one. Yeah. So it's work. And there's there's countries that are really nice to be in and there's others where it's where a little it's bit terrible. dicey. Yeah, <laughs> no, the, the, the guy traveled to North Korea. He, he, traveled, wow. he, he traveled in Africa to the most absurd countries where yeah. he needed protection, etc. Yeah, yeah. But, but we were lucky on that project to have a financier who... who uh, Supported him, was calm, didn't have patient capital. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think in the in in the industry that we are yeah. in, you need patient capital. Yeah, well, usually it's not. That's so. That's no. That's wonderful that's, when you yeah. can find it. Because um, obviously, when you when you talk about the story with the photographer, one of the first things that comes to mind, uh, in in my mind, is the risk management. You yeah. know, like you obviously making a let's say substantial investment, even mm. if he travels, uh, you know, in, in a very light way, it yeah. still costs uh, plenty of cash to, yeah. to do it. And, and then, you know, he goes to all these, uh, yeah, and afterwards exotic places, yeah. you know, and, uh, you might even worry, is he going to come back? You yeah. Know? And, um, so how, how did you approach or how did you get involved and say, we can be all right with this? Is it that, Kind of what you described, you're approaching every project almost in a way like if this project fails or doesn't work, it doesn't break our neck. It doesn't it doesn't kill the company. Okay. So that's that's, that's that, really that, where you take the strength and the, the calmness yeah. from yeah. Uh, when you approach that. Yeah, and and obviously it's also kind of spreading the risk. Mm -hmm. If you 
if you find partners, you share a risk. Yeah. That obviously helps. If you if you do everything yourself, well, you will get burned if a project fails. Mm -hmm. So not only does it help to share in a way that it builds creativeness, yeah. that it builds expertise, etc., but it also helps to spread a little bit of the financial risk of yeah. a project. Yeah. So in the case of the photographer, we had a financier who luckily enough uh, is patient enough, believes in the project and, and, and financed his seven year trip. And now <laughs> is financing, let's say the, the, the rollout yeah. of the project, yeah. because now it needs to be marketed. People need to yeah, hear about it. Yeah. To yeah. hear about it yeah. to, and to buy the books, to buy the pictures, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, we need to find partners uh, yeah. the, to do exhibitions. We just opened the largest photo exhibition in Dubai. Wow. Huge success. Yeah. Fantastic. That was amazing. And, yeah. and it's, it's standing there until April and then we go uh, to London. Wow. And there will be a three year exhibition in Amsterdam. So it's now it's, it's coming to life. Yeah. Project. Fantastic. But we'll be sure to put the link in a description yeah, underneath cool. this, uh, um, a podcast um, and please be sure to introduce me to the investor yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were just talking about um, collaborating co-financing how do you broach this with uh, especially like film projects obviously that's it's it's quite common to do that um, how do you figure out who you want to work with or can work with mm. what drives that process well it's 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 a bit of uh, uh, learning by doing um in in the movie business we we came across uh, a US producer that was seasoned that that uh, won academy awards and uh, and we had a great project from the Netherlands that we developed with them together and then once you start to get to know the business get to know the partners it spreads out and you meet more people. You it, So it's it, it grows while you are doing it. Mm -hmm. And to find the right partners in this industry, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult. It's not, it's, it, you can have a very nice, long conversation uh, 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 creative talks, uh, you, you feel a connection with yeah. the partner and still it Doesn't is, it, it isn't the right partner for mm. you. Uh, so, so again, you need to be patient. You need to have time to work out a relationship. It's, it's, it's like a marriage yep. that you start yep. a partnership in, 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 in the movie business is like a marriage. Yeah. So Pretty much any, I think any business partnership, um, and and I see this all the time that people I feel underestimate that mm -hmm. uh, that it is. Uh, I mean, it's like a marriage; it doesn't have to be for life, but it's good if it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, because divorce usually is quite pricey. Um, so uh, you you want to do your due diligence. And w one thing in like co-financing films and projects, what I always found very interesting is that for the other party that you're approaching, mm -hmm. um, but equally for when you get approached, uh, it's an outside project, you know, because usually, like, I mean, somebody had to create it, develop yeah. it, and then take it to the market. How do you, so how do you, like when you're sitting on the other side of the table and someone comes to you and and maybe you've even worked with them and, and that was good, you still think, of course, every project is different and yeah. you want to be careful. How do you consider, let's say, outside projects uh, to introduce to the group. Yeah, that's uh, obviously it, it. The 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 base of uh, getting involved in an outside project is trust. Mm -hmm. Trust of the other party that brings it to you. If they have delivered before, uh, and and are not bullshitting, mm -hmm. which 
there's a lot of that going on <laughs> in the industry. Yeah, that's it's. I it, think the the entertainment industry holds the world bullshit reserve. Yeah, for, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for when uh, we but, run but, out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But 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 if you can uh, surpass that mm. that blah blah and the bullshit, yeah. and you find a trustworthy person who actually is delivering, mm. and obviously the 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 project that they bring to the table the ip the idea must be good or something that you that you can relate to yeah because sometimes it is um uh, it is a, a, a let's say a commercial decision and mm -hmm. they bring something to the table let's say that we, we did a lot of horror movies okay mm -hmm. i am not particularly fond <laughs> of horror mm. I, I don't watch it. Do not watch it. Yeah. But there is a market for it. Yeah, of course. And I understand the market. So if someone comes to me with a proposal of a very scary and gory horror movie <laughs> in which I see commercial possibilities, yeah. I will not turn him down because I don't like Because you the personally movie. don't like it. Huh? Okay, so it sounds like your standard almost for any other like outside project is it needs to fulfill the same criteria as if you had done it yourself. Yes. Okay. So yes. it's, and, and of course, you know, question of taste, whether you like the genre or not, it's, yeah. uh, it's the same internally for you. But the, the, the thing is you are working so long and hard on a project to get it made mm. that you have to treat it as your own. Yeah. It's, Even even if someone comes to you and and says, "Listen, I have an almost fully financed movie and costed movie," then you still will have to do another year or two before you actually make it. If yeah. you put in the last money, yeah. then, then it will take some time. Yeah. But you have to be invested, so it needs to feel like your own. Yeah, it, it feels like a lot of disappointment in this industry historically has been created by people saying like ah, we're, we're almost there we just need you know 600,000 we yeah. just need 200,000 and and then you know finished and and then of course it didn't work out and when I hear these stories I always feel like it's because people didn't dive into the project mm -hmm. enough uh, and did exactly what you said you know like make it their own yeah and and see how you know uh, if it all checks out um so it's um, and and even even then, it is not a guarantee mm. because you don't know the industry changes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's say by the year. Yep. Certainly now, that the movie industry is is the the last ten years it's it's been turned around completely. Yeah. So so and and where will it be next year or the year after that? Yeah. You don't know. You can create something that people in the industry say, well, this is what we are looking for right now. Yeah. This is what distributors buy. This is what the market is ready for. And when you're done creating it and you bring it on the market, it might have changed 180 degrees. Yeah. And if, again, if you're that big ship, <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah, that's very difficult. <laughs> Um, let's talk about this real quick because um, I'm very keen to get your opinion on this. Uh, especially, film mm. obviously has changed tremendously, and there seems to be these two groups of people. One says like, "Ah, oh, film is is dead." Others mm. are like, "Ah, oh, no, of course, uh, you know, it's it's going to be reborn," uh, and it feels like that happens every <laughs> every other year. Yeah. Um, but obviously, with new companies like uh, Netflix and Amazon coming into the market, mm -hmm. uh, changing the rules uh, quite a little bit in television, but also in film. How how do you see kind of uh, the future of film and maybe also film distribution? Because obviously that has changed quite a bit. Yeah, well, you see the big companies already shifting. Uh, the, the big studios, they they have their push, they have their their marketing budgets, so they can, they can do their big uh, franchises, they can push it into the world. That will not disappear. Yeah, that will never change, I think. But also the big companies like Disney, etc., they they are going straight to consumer 
Mm. And that's their focus. Because that's the way that people consume their content nowadays. They they want it directly and on whatever screen that they have their hands on. So I it is changing. Um I think that the let let's say the, the big screen will stay forever. Mm-hmm. Uh the 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 thing is the the balance between studio and non-studio movies. Yeah. Uh that we are losing it a little bit there. Mm-hmm. There the, the gap is too big. There there is no m- middle yeah uh way of producing. So the the art house the 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 independent producers have to uh create let's say the same content as 10 years ago mm-hmm. but for a quarter of the price okay yeah because otherwise they they won't see a dime back or their investors won't see a dime back it's, yeah that's it, it that's a very hard thing um be, because also of the changing industry mm. and if you the, you can go to uh, uh let's say you can sell your project to netflix they pay you one amount and yep. that's it you have to yep. do it with that yep and you don't own it anymore and you don't own it yeah, there's there's no further upside in, yeah. the, in the future yeah it's um it, it it's um sometimes it seems like it's a bit what happened in the um, music industry that of course the sales number for physical record sales mm-hmm. went down, but obviously now there's this new thing called streaming revenues. Yeah. And of course it took a while to find a new equilibrium or a new um, kind of business model, model yeah. for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Um, and and now, you know, the, the music industry has grown uh, quite tremendously over the last three, four years. Mm-hmm. And, and it looks like it's going to continue that way. Yeah. Um, Do you feel in film or filmed content the same is happening? Obviously, you have people like YouTube um, who have produced an enormous amount of YouTube creators Mm -hmm. where maybe not on a company basis, uh, but certainly on an individual level have achieved uh, enormous fame and and also fortune Mm -hmm. um, that that's just changing, that the new you know, rich movie stars aren't coming out of movie and television anymore, yeah. but they're actually, you know, like self-published in a sense. Um, do you feel that's something that's going to continue or do you feel it's it's going to be just that film, uh, there's new pressure on being very efficient in production? Mm-hmm. And you, you know, I agree with you because the tent poles, I think yeah. they're never going to go away because no. uh, A, people love them. Uh, I mean, it's a commercial case for it. Um but for other content that they just find different routes of being made and monetized. Yeah. Well, the, the, and and I think you you will have a, a kind of a, a, a wave uh, uh, structure in in the next years where the movie or content industry mm. will uh, reinvent. Yeah. Uh, themselves so 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 it obviously it has to change because because the old model is not viable anymore mm. and well it's already changing but netflix i i don't think netflix is the end game mm. there will be uh, there's always a, be something new something new mm. uh and I don't know where that is going, and until that moment, you have to do it with what we have right now. Yeah. So, so you have to develop for a short-term market. Yeah. Which is, in a way, bigger than ever. Yeah. The only thing is that for independent producers, it's harder to get to that bigger market. Yeah. Yeah. In a way where you actually make money. Out of something that you create, yeah. So, so it's 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 pretty difficult to yeah. be in this market at this yeah. point. Yeah. 
Staying on that point, um, I'm wondering what what are some of the trends you're watching or developments in the market that you're watching? Because obviously, as you said, it's a very fluid yeah. uh, situation. What what are the things you're looking out for? Well, I I think international television series, big shows, that's that's the what people want mm -hmm. nowadays. They want to consume. They they want to binge watch. They yeah. want to get really into a story that is longer than one hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, show so that is that that is something that we are looking into in creating our own content, mm -hmm. but also partnering up with other people who have great ideas that we can help them roll out let's say international projects, European big series, et cetera, yeah. for either Netflix or uh, the big streamers. Yeah. Um, you just mentioned kind of working with these uh, projects. How, how would you say is the share of kind of the projects you guys developed and worked on versus what you take on from the outside? I think, I think that 60% okay. of what we do is from ourselves and mm -hmm. 40 is from the outside okay how do you actually do this um this is something that just came to mind when obviously you mentioned you have uh, a bunch of partners in the different companies how, what do you guys do when one of you disagrees and says no i don't want to do this is that then like does everyone have a veto right that is then ah, <laughs> the last that's, word <laughs> that's that, that's a, that's a good question we we seldom come into a situation okay. like that but in the end we are such a, a, a small company mm. that yes we have a veto right if someone totally disagrees he obviously has to uh, 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 let's say have great arguments yeah. for vetoing a yeah. project but it affects us all yeah. if we do something that 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 someone doesn't want to do so yeah. there is a veto but but uh that's where your the, training as a lawyer comes yeah. in <laughs> we, we, <laughs> yeah no no you 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 have to obviously you have to be self-assured yeah to uh, to push a project further yeah. even if the partners are uh hesitant yeah and and usually when they are against the project they are for good reasons yeah. so also okay. what i what i said in the beginning you have to listen be open minded partner, yeah. you have to listen yeah. to your partners you have to listen to people who have different opinions because well the the, the, the something that you create yourself mm. is is, is, is you will feel very strongly about that, but sometimes you will uh, lose the oversight. Yeah, I mean it happens. You fall in love with a project, yeah. you know, and you like <laughs> with the marriage again. You fall in love, you know. You overlook certain things that um, are worth watching. Yeah, um, I, I find it's always an opportunity also to make things better. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone identified a weakness and says, "No, I don't like it because of this." Know, it's a chance to say, okay, how do we solve this yeah. uh, before it actually happens? I, f I feel like that's a big part of managing something in media and entertainment successfully is anticipating what the problems could be mm -hmm. and then just eliminating that from the beginning, kind of yeah. by design. Um, one other thing I was wondering about is you're obviously based in Amsterdam, Netherlands, um, and... and uh, all of you are Dutch, mm -hmm. so Amsterdam is kind of the natural choice. But you feel like the Netherlands, especially what's going on in Europe, um, Netherlands now is kind of a competitive advantage for you guys um, in, in some respect that you say, oh, it's actually really great that we're here mm -hmm. instead of uh, Italy <laughs> yeah. or elsewhere. Yeah. Um, well, we, we, we thought about expanding, mm -hmm. moving, uh, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm. If if you, 
let's say talking about film production. If you say I'm going to start a film production company in LA, mm. you will be one of the <laughs> hundred thousand film productions in LA. Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. Do it from Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, it it is central. You find your partners. Mm. I have partners in Australia. I have partners in 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 the US. Find your partners there, but work from your home territory, mm. it will bring you advantages. Uh, and and the world is uh, actually so uh, small and achievable nowadays. Mm. You can you can reach to everywhere, yep. either by traveling really yep. fast or by by uh, phone, mail, Skype, etc. Yeah. Uh, so 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 the the I I don't think that that we have a disadvantage of being in Holland. No. Uh, I think we, we, we have quite an advantage no. of having a Dutch company uh, solidly based in, in Amsterdam. I, I think, I, I think we, it, 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 it really helps to stay centered where you are, uh, uh, where you originated. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure, because, I mean, obviously what happens uh, a lot, as, as you just mentioned, is people have success in some area, in some country, wherever they're based out of, and then the next step always seems to be, oh, we need to open an office in L.A. or, uh, you know, London in some cases, um, but obviously Los Angeles is kind of the entertainment mm. capital still yeah. <laughs> of the world. Um, and... Um, and then they go there coming, you know, with with a lot of tailwind from their success in their home country. And then they're surprised that nobody's waiting for them at the airport in Los yeah. Angeles. Saying like, oh, this way, please. Um, so um, it's it's quite interesting that you guys considered it and then said, you know what, y you can go there from yeah. Europe in, I don't know, 10, 12 hours uh, quite comfortably. Uh, and you can do that trip multiple times. Uh, there is no need for us to you know, now open uh, an office there. If you need to be there, you can be. Yeah. Um, is that the same mentality when you approach uh, new initiatives that are outside of um, the scope you're currently doing mm -hmm. um, that you say, you know what, how much do we actually need to do of that ourselves versus being involved and participating? Yeah. But well, it, it, obviously it is, uh, let's say, a big factor when something comes to us that we that we look at, let's say, the partner that brings it mm -hmm. versus the expertise that we have in-house. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there is, let's say, a, a project that comes on our path that we don't know anything about, but where we feel that there's something. There's something. Yeah. It tingles in yeah. your fingers. And, and, uh, but then you have to make a, 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 a good assessment. Is this going to fly? Is this actually something that uh, will be a, an extra to what we already are doing? Uh, and is this something that we financially can support? It's it's difficult. And coming back to the to the to the to the uh, let's say to the to the place where you're based in the beginning of Montecatini, when I joined the company, I had one big wish was to let's say create more talent agencies over Europe. Mm -hmm. Starting out with Belgium, because yeah. I had a lot of uh, Belgian actors as clients as well. So I wanted a company uh, in Belgium. We started that, uh, and it didn't work. Mm. It just didn't work because of the complete different culture yeah. between the Netherlands and Belgium. Yeah, And we're so close together. Yeah, it's we even speak the same language, <laughs> oh. and it didn't work. Oh. So stick to your 
Yeah. Plan, do it from, let's say, the the the, the safe environment where yeah. you where you're based in. Um, you just mentioned culture. Uh, obviously, talking about the two different countries, but um, it sounds like also what you've done with the group is not just build these companies, but build a culture mm. uh, internally. Do you feel that? that's an asset that should be on the balance sheet that is actually helping you. Um, it, it sounds like you, um, all of you, all the partners made that a huge priority in the beginning. Was that just because, you know, it fit nicely together anyways, or was that a very conscious decision saying like, no, look, whether we are big or small, mm. there is a kind of a philosophy almost yeah. of how we do things. Yeah. Um, take us through that process. What, What did that entail? Well, I I, I think that uh, my partner Daniel is 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 a big factor in in the way we approach business. Mm -hmm. It is not the, the 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 basic idea of the company and the companies and creating. Uh, let's say uh, creating content or companies or is not finance driven. Mm -hmm. It's human driven. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, it is uh, your inner self driven. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and that is something that we always uh, have pursued mm -hmm. to stay close to yourself to help other people out mm -hmm. not to screw other people yeah not to uh, uh be the hardest one to make the fastest money yeah but think of long term think of where you want to be in 10 years whether it's a project yeah it's a company or it's your uh, uh, people that you're working with. Yeah. Just think of the long term. And that's, that's, that works. That's a, that's a very interesting um, point because uh, one, and in, in of course you've, doing this, uh, you've been doing this for a while. Um, if you could go back in time and talk to your 20-year-old self, <laughs> what mm. would be a recommendation uh, that you would have? Ooh. So especially you just mentioned mm. that, you know, think long term. Yeah. That's obviously a very fantastic aspiration to have. Yeah. But knowing what you now know, uh, what uh, would you have done differently maybe? Or what would you say, no, this was actually a great decision or, um, you know, this is this is what I would have loved to tell my 20-year-old self. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's a difficult question. I think... I think, uh, let's say, uh, patience and uh, and the 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 broad mindset that I would have loved to have that uh, 20 years ago. Okay, I was rushing things mm -hmm. out of enthusiasm. Okay, uh, the, the, uh, and a lot of projects, let's say that I initiated then uh, did not make it to the finish line because of uh, because of me wanting to go too quickly mm -hmm. not partnering up with the right people uh, not opening my yeah. my senses so that, that that would be something that I if I could do it over again yeah that I that I definitely would try to stick to that plan. Yeah. The way I I do it now with my partners and that it seems to work. At least it feels like it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So um because obviously that is that's kind of a a beautiful thing about like youth. You're very enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you have a lot of energy. Yeah. Uh, you you haven't, you know, fallen down so often yet uh, and had to get up again. Um, so 
it it's um I I was just thinking of how that conversation would have gone, you know, young Garrick and yeah, yeah. older Garrick, and it's just like calm down, and it's like okay, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and you have to yeah. sometimes make mistakes mm. and learn from it. Yeah, you're not born an expert on A, B, or C. Yeah, you have to learn by doing. You have to so learn true. by yeah. by failure. Yeah, but. But it would be nice if, if you, uh, well, let's say if you could if you could have the helicopter view from the start of your career, that would have been cool to have. Yeah, for sure. But then the question is always: Would you have seen it the same way? You know, because uh, you Perhaps. might have just looked down. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, you're sitting in the helicopter. You're just yeah. looking down, like, oh, look at that. <laughs> I can see my street from here. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of you know the the big picture, um, but uh, yeah. So having said that, what is in store for you next? What are you working on now? What is like on the agenda for you now? Uh, we're working on several big projects. So so we're doing an international uh, television series that we're developing right now in the early stages, but hoping to have that ready in November. To pitch it to the to the to the to the big guys, so to the Netflix, to the Amazon, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a that's a really large one. Uh, we are creating a new theater show, uh, which is very cool uh, and never been done before. So so okay. uh, it's something that we are starting out in Amsterdam as a, a let's say a pilot theater okay. show. Mm -hmm. Uh, want to have it, it running for a year and then we can roll it out all over the world. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, obviously, the, 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 the photography project that we are uh, working on needs to spread out. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a, a, a big thing that I'm working on. We have that animation project. Yeah. I think we have, we have six or seven international movies in development. Uh, so we're quite busy at this moment <laughs> oh. yeah. and and still running the talent agency uh, which luckily for us we have good people who are managing that and we don't have to do it ourselves oh. but there's a there's there's a lot going on oh. a lot going on if you um and uh, and i want to get your thoughts on this if if you were starting today um what would be your like number one advice for someone starting today of trying to break into the industry, uh, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's it, 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 that's not completely completely right because because it is such a cool industry mm. to be in, but it's a very hard industry. It's it's not easy. Mm. The the guys who have the lucky break because they found something that immediately worked there are one in a million yeah it's it's a long process in this industry to get where you need to be to have the success to create real stuff every movie theater show uh, photography project dance project that we're working on it, it takes three, four, five, six, seven years before yeah. you actually are at a starting point where you can actually produce mm -hmm. and make it. You have to be very, very patient. You have to have, uh, how do you say it, uh, stamina, you have to yeah. have. Yeah. So. Don't be in it for the lifestyle. <laughs> no, no. So, sometimes, sometimes it can be fun uh, and, and 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 sexy. Listen, we're we're at the at, at the Berlinale here. Uh, I'm I'm having great evenings, great parties, yeah. great meetings with people. Yeah. There is a fun component in it for sure, yeah. but it's work. Yeah, it's not that. It's not all glamour and sexy it's work yeah so yeah well that, that, that i think it's the it's it's 
the best business to be in because <laughs> I love to create. Yeah. But that's me. Yeah. It's not for everyone. I think that's a perfect note to end it on so we can both get back to work. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you thank for you your for time. I'm looking forward to seeing what's next and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. We'd love to hear from you now. Please let us know what you think of the show and this episode. Leave us a comment, send us a message or tweet. And we're looking forward to welcoming you on our next episode. By the way, you can follow Media CFO on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts and rate and review this podcast. Again, thank you for listening and bye-bye. The Media CFO podcast is hosted by Tobias Sieger. Our executive producer is Bridget Scar. Digital editing by Christina Vogt and Atanasios Karakantas. Designed by Daniel Cortes. Many thanks to Anouk van Gemen and Frederick Jäger for their creative review. The notes for the show can be found on www.themediacfo.com. Copyright 2019, Colibri Studios.